Chapter 1. Struggling for Identity A person can only love at the level their heart has received healing and love from God. As a very young child, I struggled with my identity. I remember being six years old and my parents were divorcing. I felt like I was lost. The trauma of it all. And a voice of accusation hit me, lying to me, saying, It's your fault. I did not know at that age that I did not have to receive those words. These were lies of the enemy. But I remember crying, day after day, wondering where my daddy was and why he couldn't be with me. Fear attacked me when my father first left. After this, he was in an accident at work. He cut his hand and was unable to work due to his injury. During this time, I was not able to see him and my heart yearned day after day for my dad. Looking back, I wish I had cried out to my Heavenly Father to take the pain away and comfort me. The father wound was fresh in my life. As you read this, if you can identify with this pain, ask the Holy Spirit to heal the father wound in your heart. I declare over you. I declare that you do not carry an orphan spirit, but a spirit of adoption from your Heavenly Father. You are his son or his daughter. I thank the Lord that your identity is established in him. We lived next door to my grandmother, so I would run over to her house for homemade gravy and all the comforts that a grandmother can offer. Visiting with her was the best way for me to escape what was going on with my emotions. It was my safe haven. The Lord was drawing me in, and he was using my grandmother to do it. She attended a little Methodist church down the road, and she would take me with her. I thought it was cool because they had snack time, and the Lord's house was filled with cookies and sweets. It seemed like all the church members loved to bake, and of course, kids love sugar. I look back now and laugh, but it worked, and I kept going to church every week. If I went, I knew I could have snacks, and these were the good ones. There was a generous spread of homemade pies, cakes, and you name it, it was there. But as I kept attending, I began to wonder, who is God and does he love me? Is he someone who is distant? Or could I hear his voice as Moses did? I remember being amazed as they used the Velcro boards with the Bible characters to teach me the story of Moses. I was amazed that God would help one man that much. So I continued going for the snacks, the crafts, and vacation Bible school. It helped to take my mind off things at home. I was begging to know whether there really is a God and if I could accept him. I just wasn't sure how. I noticed that year after year as I kept going to church, I became more and more hungry to know this God that they would preach and teach about. Could I find this God? Would he love me? These were all questions I would ask myself in my heart day after day. Next came a chapter of my life that I was not prepared for. My mom got remarried, and my dad did as well. Both happened at about the same time. Soon afterwards, it was announced that I would have a new sibling on each side. Well, as a child with a childish nature and not God's nature, I was mad. How could God let this happen? I had just started seeing my dad again, and now there was going to be a new baby? What in the world? Due to my own wounds, I was not happy, but rather jealous. 
Little did I know, in my own home, we would experience abuse as well. At first, I was controlled in very small ways, such as being put down for everything I did. My mom also began to experience emotional abuse. There was a lot of anger and rage in the house, and I didn't know how to defend my mother. Fear started to develop. It's funny how fear gets a grip on your soul slowly, and it can go unnoticed. There were violent outbursts towards my mom, and I would cry in my bedroom, not knowing how to handle this. My young, wounded heart could not take anything else. I remember attending a support group for children of divorced parents, but no one talked about abuse. Therefore, I didn't understand what was going on. Was this abuse? Was this normal in a family? I had no idea. I was hit with confusion because of what was going on. I felt like my whole life had flipped upside down. At the same time, I was wondering if there is a God and how I could find him. At this point, I was also dealing with shame because I couldn't understand why this was happening to me. Was there something wrong with me? Feelings of rejection set in without me realizing it. It was very subtle and deceiving. My plan was to stay at my grandmother's house as much as I could so I could feel safe. I didn't know what else to do or whom to tell. I did not realize that trauma had set in, and probably post-traumatic stress disorder, PTSD, as well. Then, one night, things escalated. Really late that night, I was trying to go to bed. I had been isolated in my room and was only allowed to come out to eat. My stepdad would make me stay in the room, and I was not allowed to spend much time with my mom or little brother. Even though I lived in the same house with them, I was so lonely because I could only come out when he allowed me to. I could read or watch TV, but that's all there was to do in my room. Back in those days, we did not have video games or iPads, and kids didn't have cell phones. I think this was when depression set in. I questioned where God was while this was happening to my family. Did he love me or even care about what was happening under our roof? Finally, it spilled out at school. I got a D on my report card and was terrified to go home. I told the school principal that I was afraid to go home because my stepdad might beat me. Then something happened that was really confusing. While I was being held at the school... When they were contacting my mom, my stepdad sent flowers to me at the school, denying everything. I was in shock. I was mad. I didn't want the stupid flowers. I wanted him to stop abusing me and my family. I wanted to not have fear in my home environment and not have someone control every single part of my day. Things eased up at the house for a while, but not for long. I was hoping that the attention from school would change things and that we would have a normal family again. But it didn't stop. Soon after, my stepdad went back to treating everyone in my family the same way. I was becoming more and more afraid and could not sleep at night. I didn't know the spirit of fear was becoming a stronghold in my life at that time. Have you been through something traumatic? Do you often feel fearful? Say this prayer with me. Lord, I renounce the spirit of fear 